On this edition of Emeralds, Florida, we head to the theme park capital of the world, Orlando. But our focus, what else would you expect, is the food. We're going to meet some of Orlando's best chefs and get to see them in action. We'll also take you for a quick tour of the nightlife throughout Orlando. Then we'll top it off with dessert, chocolates are on the menu. That's all coming up on this edition of Emeralds, Florida. Welcome to Florida, specifically Orlando, one of the greatest travel destinations in the world. You know, me and my family have a home and two of my great restaurants here. I guess I just love the sunshine. And a lot of other people around the world do as well. Last year, 55 million visitors made Orlando their vacation or meeting destination. While the world's best theme parks come to mind when you think of Orlando, there are plenty of dining and entertainment options as well. And the city is divided into six districts to help you sort through it, each with its own distinct personality. Our first stop is the Winter Park District, about a 20 minute drive from the theme parks. The main area to check out in Winter Park is Park Avenue and the surrounding streets. There are over 140 independently owned restaurants, sidewalk cafes and boutiques, along with a number of museums that are worth checking out. There are a lot of different types of great cuisine to choose from, and we're gonna stop at one restaurant that's making quite a name for itself. It's called The Ravenous Pig. James Petrikas, along with his wife Julie, are the owners of The Ravenous Pig, as well as Cast and Lauder, which is located right down the street. How would you describe your restaurant here, The Ravenous Pig? We call ourselves an American gastropub. Right. Um, we kind of fell in love with the gastropub movement when we were cooking in New York. We like the concept of it being a little more casual, but food driven and very seasonal. We try and change our menu a little bit every day, depending on what we can get. So you're working with a lot of the farmers, a lot of the fishermen we as are. well. We try and highlight our seafood. Um, you know, we are the ravenous pigs, so everyone thinks we're barbecue, but you know, we're, we're not. We're almost 50-50 seafood and meat. The ravenous pig menu has a wide range of options to choose from, including an awesome charcuterie program. They have a butcher in house who prepares it, and it's paired with artisan cheeses and house-made pickled vegetables. And the talent at the pig isn't confined only to the kitchen. There are some pretty interesting things going on behind the bar as well. This is an old fashioned with bacon. Here's a chili vodka mixed with a watermelon consomme. And this one is gin mixed with a seasonal fig jam. We want that to be the same as the food and seasonal, always changing, you know, evolving with the menu. When we moved to his kitchen, he prepared both a hot and cold dish with one of his favorite Florida fishes, cobia. The hot dish was cobia with Gulf of Mexico clams, Zellwood corn, and cured lotto, and it was delicious. We'll tell you how to get that recipe in a moment. Then the chef also prepared a cold dish using cobia. He began by curing it for about 45 minutes. And the cure he uses is salt and sugar with a zest of limes, grapefruit, and lemon. Cover it, let it chill, and that's where we pick it up. This is the piece of cobia, basically cured. Usually what I'll do, I'll just sort of take the bloodline out since it is a raw preparation. Come right down there, and then it'll pop right out. And then just come straight down. And a nice sharp knife, four or five slices. Again, I leave a little bit big because I like the texture. Right. So you got your pieces here. So I just go down with the fish, right down. Nice. So then we've got a little finishing olive oil. I'll usually put just a little bit of lemon juice down. And we can just sort of go all over. And the finishing olive oil. So it's really straightforward, simple, highlighting the fish, not trying to mask anything. Then you just want to go down with your relish. As much as you want, a lot of flavor in this relish. It's toasted pine nuts, golden raisins, capers. Real nice. I so love very, all those flavors simple, together too. Yeah. And then uh, if you want to just garnish with a little bit of that. And then what I finish it with is uh, there's a silver mullet row batarga coming out of uh, just below the Tampa region. And uh, for those at home, chef, who are not familiar with batarga. Yes, batarga is the cured and dried um, row of a fish. Usually I would finish this with sea salt, but with the batarga, I think we have enough salt on there. 
and you can just sort of use a truffle slicer or mandolin and just sort of slice it all over there. Beautiful. And that's it. There you have it. There's the cold preparation of that. Yeah, and again, Kobe, I think done raw like this is, is, is beautiful because of the texture again, and it picks up the, the, the cure from the citrus and then that little relish. Very simple, straightforward. So now comes the best part. Yeah. Here's the Kobe, yeah. you and I. All right, so here I'm going here. That lovely combination. Delicious. Simple, straightforward, but yeah. flavors work. And nothing masking that beautiful Colby from the Gulf. Yeah. All right, Chef, thank you so yeah, much. Pleasure having Thanks you. Thanks for your hospitality. It's an honor. Folks, if you want the recipes, it's really easy. Go on cookingchannel.tv.com or you can go on emeralds.com as well. In our next segment, we're heading to the Universal City Walk District, and I want to show you a place that I'm pretty proud of Emeralds Orlando. Stay with us. Emeralds, Florida is sponsored by Visit Florida, promoting tourism in the Sunshine State. Emeralds, Florida is sponsored by Visit Orlando. Orlando makes me smile. When you come to the Universal City Walk District in Orlando, be prepared to experience some exciting nightclubs, great entertainment, and some awesome restaurants. There's one that I know a little bit about. Welcome to Emeralds Orlando. Gabriel Orozco is a longtime friend and colleague and has been the general manager of Emeralds Orlando since it opened in 1999 at Universal City Walk. Has much changed oh, yeah. since you've been here? A lot of things have changed. You've got um, a lot of more fine dining restaurants. Uh, you have a lot of more people dining now, more looking for that experience, fine dining experience, uh, places to go eat and have fun and, and just enjoy good value for what, they, what they're getting. Chef Bernard Gamouche is another longtime friend and we've worked together since 1984. He's now the culinary director for our Orlando operation, which includes Emeralds Orlando, and another restaurant on the Universal property, Chop Chop. Being the director of culinary here in Florida, what have you noticed that has evolved in, in Orlando from the dining scene? Well, since I've been here, I've uh, seen more local growers, a lot of more restaurants. Uh, the, the scene just, just totally changed. And how's the Gulf? How's the, uh, how's the fishing industry in the Gulf right now? Awesome, awesome. A lot of grouper, you know, that's right. the, that's the state with it. I don't think a lot of people understand 60, 65% of seafood that America is consuming is coming right from the Gulf. Yes. Right, right from the Gulf here. Since we're at Emeralds Orlando, I wanted to let you see Chef Bernard prepare one of the newest dishes on the menu, local black grouper with sofrito and avocado rock shrimp toast. All right, so we got a nice filet of grouper. You know, season both sides with a little bit of a... a little essence, a little Creole essence. seasoning. Yeah, a little oil. Pans nice and hot, yeah. Now we're sauteing the grouper. There's a couple of components to this dish uh, that you absolutely love. One of them is a sofrito. Tell us, what is a sofrito? This is from the Spanish cuisine. Bell peppers we use, uh, a lot of cilantro. In this case, seafood, shrimp stock, or you can use, you know, uh, fish stock. So a lot of onions, a lot of bell pepper. Garlic. Garlic. Bay leaf. Bay leaf. A lot of, uh, a lot of cilantro. cilantro. Okay. And, and that's it, cooked down on the stove? Yes. Not not too thick, not too loose, but got, you know, good body. And this was a little twist, like a little shrimp toast, okay? Right. Where you make an egg batter and you fry it. Right. Some white sliced bread with local rock shrimp and an avocado spread, pan fry that. And that's going as uh, as your starch for this dish. So now the group is about three minutes in the pan. Yeah. Got that beautiful color, almost that sort of golden color right there. It looks fantastic. You taught me this years ago. Put a little butter in there. This is an unsalted butter. What you can see is it's sort of foaming, yet it's really given the fish flavor beside the oil. And you just sort of baste the fish a little bit to give it that wonderful flavor. Let's put a little uh, sofrito down. Oh, that looks awesome. That warm toast of rock shrimp and avocado spread is going in the base of the, the dish. Wow. Man, grouper, it looks so beautiful, don't it? Gorgeous. Something about Florida and seafood is just incredible. And it's garnished with a little bit of cilantro. So local grouper, avocado rock shrimp toast with sofrito. 
Folks, it's easy. You just go on cookingchannel.tv.com if you want any of the recipes, or you can go on emeralds.com as well. Chef Bernard, I want to thank you very much. Thank you. And Gabriel for your hospitality here at Emeralds Orlando. In our next segment, we'll take you to one of the best wine bars in Orlando. Then, a stop at a brewery that makes organic beers. Then we'll visit the coldest place in Florida to get a drink, an ice bar. Stay with us. Emeralds Florida is sponsored by Fresh from Florida. For unique recipes, visit freshfromflorida.com. Whether you come into Orlando for business or pleasure, your nightlife opportunities are endless. Each of Orlando's six dining and entertainment districts offer a wide range of options for whatever mood you're in. If it's wine, Vines Grill and Wine Bar is one to try and it's located in the Restaurant Road District of Orlando. It's a fine dining restaurant with a full bar and every night there's live jazz. But at Vines, it's really about the wine. Kimberly Kolovos is the general manager knowing the market here and how for a long time wine was a, a little bit difficult here you have a great program tell us a little bit about your program it is a fantastic program and it, uh, you're right we were one of the first out here it's uh, very extensive um, there's over 600 labels on the written wine list it is ever growing and changing at vines grill and wine bar you can get 40 wines by the glass and their staff has five sommeliers to help educate customers about the wines they have on their list. As we shared a glass of Riesling, I noticed that there was bacon on the bar instead of the typical bar snacks, like peanuts or pretzels that you usually see. There's no magic to this, it's just bacon. No magic, it is bacon. Who doesn't love bacon? I like how you're talking, I can tell you. <laughs> I've been on. All right, let's see what it does to this. This is delicious, by the way. I like it. Good. I really like it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for your That's hospitality. Right. Of course, it's been a pleasure. There are a lot of wine drinkers, but there are even more beer drinkers. And we found a place near downtown Orlando that not only brews, but serves their own organic beer. Hey, John. Hey, Emerald. How are you? Good, very good. Good to see you. Orlando Brewing is in the downtown district of the city. It's a little off the beaten path, but well worth the effort to find it. John Cheek is the president of the company. Orlando Brewing is Florida's only certified organic brewery. It's a pretty big commitment to uh, commit to going organic, uh, whatever it is, but particularly with beer. Why did you make that move? Um, I've, uh, huh, I've been called a tree-hugging capitalist. I think that the, uh, that the biosphere has economic value that people just don't see. And I think that if we, uh, we do things right, that uh, it's a lot better for all of us. Amen. Thank you. Amen. At Orlando Brewing, the beer is fresh and never pasteurized. They don't really serve any food, but you can bring that with you. They actually look at the beer as food. Liquid bread, they call it. And their beers are the only ones declared fresh from Florida by the state's Department of Agriculture. There are always at least a dozen ales to choose from, and the staff comes up with their distinctive names, such as Miami Vice, I-4 IPA, and the, uh, oh, pompous ass. The pompous ass is probably the one that uh, I picked uh, specifically, and uh, drink enough of them and you uh, will become one. <laughs> I love it. Orlando Brewing produces all of its beer right on site, and they offer free tours Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. I would like you to try one of our, uh, our specialty beers that we've had for quite a while. Okay. It's a Doble Imperial IPA. This is a, uh, about 8.5% by volume. Uh, it's got more of the malt. It has more of the, uh, the hops. More Please. hops. More hops. That's delicious. Mm. <laughs> thank you, my friend. General, thank you Thanks very so much. much. Thank you. I'll you be back. No goodbyes. I'll see you again. Oh, I look forward to it. Now, those of you that are into spirits that go out at night, I'm going to show you something very unique that Orlando has. And there's only three of them in the United States. 
It's called Ice Bar Orlando, located in the convention district, and once I get my fancy coat on, I'll enter the 20 degree room, where both the drinks and the people are chilled. Patsy Turner is the owner of Ice Bar Orlando, and she took me on a tour of it. Here it is. And here it is, this is the ice bar. We have 50 tons of ice carved into this wonderful winter wonderland. It was a design that came from an expedition that I did into Antarctica. There are only 27 ice bars in the world, and many of those are seasonal, meaning at some point they're going to melt. Ice Bar Orlando is open all year round, and it's the largest permanent ice bar in the world. All of the ice carvings at Ice Bar are created by an international ice carving gold medal winner. So one of the things that we do a lot is we like to welcome people with their own personal ice carving. Thank you very so much. So we have a welcome emerald ice carving just for you. That's very cool. At the Ice Bar, the furniture, walls, bar, and glasses are all made of ice. You're only allowed to stay for 45 minutes at a time, even though they provide you with coats and also gloves, which come in handy when you try the vodkas they serve in their ice glasses. All right, so you have these real ice carved glasses. They are. So how do, you, how do you recycle them? Actually, we take them out back and we water the flowers with them. <laughs> Saves That's on great. water. Cheers. Cheers. Here's to you, my friend. Here's to you, thank you. Next up, we have a story about some pretty amazing chocolates. And unlike the ice bar, no coats or gloves are required. We'll be right back. Emeralds Florida is sponsored by the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association. Our mission is to protect, educate, and promote Florida's hospitality industry. Emeralds Florida is sponsored by VisitFlorida.com. Find out what the sunshine can do for you at VisitFlorida.com. So far on the show, we've checked out some amazing dishes, some incredible nightlife, and now it's time for dessert. You're going to meet one of the most outstanding pastry chefs, and he considers himself a chocoholic. Hey, chef. Chef, welcome. How are you? Good to see you. David Ramirez is the executive pastry chef at Rosen Shingle Creek, one of the largest full-service convention hotels in Central Florida. It's located in Orlando's convention district, and it has its own 18-hole golf course and great meeting facilities. Chef David manages a staff of 21, and every day they prepare an incredible number of cakes breads, pastries, and David's favorites, chocolates. He displayed some of the specialties of the house. How many of these babies are you doing a day? Ooh, in a high quite season? Quite a bit. High season, we're doing a couple thousand, yeah. That's the way it goes. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Yep. So probably uh, 15,000 a week um, without at blinking times, an eye. Yeah, we did seven or 8,000 last week, so wow. there's, there's weeks where we're doing a bunch. And while the work they do with the small chocolates is impressive, David and his staff at the Rosen Shingle Creek can also work on a larger scale when needed. This piece took almost 20 hours to make, and everything you see here is made of chocolate, even the gator and the golf ball. It's very uh, a la Shingle Creek. You know, we have the golf course with the gators. When I first got here, that's what I did. I really absorbed the, the, the nature around us. It's a beautiful environment. You got a whole landscape in front of you that you could just play with and have I love a great it. time. Yeah. All right, where do you want to start? Oh, right here? Oh, Lord, yeah, we have a uh, cranberry cheesecake. And then th these two are a little bit special for me. They're a hand-dipped chocolate, so it's a little bit different th than a molded chocolate, which you have there. Uh, here's a gingerbread cookie uh, with a gingerbread caramel, and this is a hazelnut crunch, which is nice. Uh, wow. Di different textures, different flavors, it's nice. And then caramel apple. Caramel apple. Yeah. So these are sort of your seasonal. I don't yeah. think a lot of people uh, really would relate to chocolate being seasonal as well oh, because yeah. of your creativity yeah. just kind of like a savory menu mm -hmm. you do it with sweets all the time yeah. okay and we move here oreo oreo everybody loves an Oof. oreo uh, and then we have a pumpkin latte and uh, white chocolate pumpkin seasonal flavors and i think oreo is one that people can have 365 right absolutely <laughs> and then we move here yeah the cute one dulce de leche uh, that's a big caramel one peanut butter and jelly and blackberry cheesecake wow those are beautiful. These are cool too because there's two fillings. For the peanut butter and jelly, the jelly is a raspberry, and then the peanut butter is nice. It's a great balance, tart and sweet. And then the blackberry cheesecake is nice too. The blackberry jam to it, and then the cheesecake filling. So. Amazing. So that's uh, what dessert is like here. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll have to come and visit and see uh, Chef David as well. I want to thank you for your hospitality. My pleasure. Thank, thank you for your friendship. Absolutely. Um, and now, before we say goodbye, 
It's time for me to eat, and it's time for you to say goodbye to Orlando. Thanks for joining us. All right, where do I start? Thank <laughs> you.